Okay, AP Physics 1, this is actually the final video in our unit on linear momentum. And we're going to be specifically focusing today on types of collisions that occur between objects. Now, before we actually get there, we need to talk about something that is not a collision, but still kind of goes in the category that we want to make sure we fully understand, which is something known as an explosion. Now, I know when you hear the word explosion, you imagine something out of an action movie, and I hate to say that this is a little less climatic, but the principle still actually applies, even to those sorts of scenarios, which is that an explosion is something where the pieces of a system that were once interlocked with each other have now been pushed apart uh, due to some brief, intense interaction, whatever that may be. So, looking up here at the top, I've got two objects which are somehow hooked together at time t equals zero. Something occurs and pushes them away from each other. So, how do we identify an explosion? Well, it's pretty easy to tell. Initially, you have what we consider to be one object, even though they're combined, we can treat them like a single object. And at the end, we have multiple objects. Now, for all the problems we're probably going to be doing, there'll probably just be two, but technically speaking, you could go above that. And an important point, though, is that even though this has occurred, the momentum is still conserved. The total momentum was zero if it wasn't moving, and now it's still zero because they're moving in opposite directions, as long as the system is, in fact, closed. There is no net external force on the system. Okay, so let's actually start talking about collisions, and there are three types that we need to be able to know. And the first one is something known as an elastic collision. An elastic collision is a collision during which the total kinetic energy of the system is conserved. And at this point, there should already be some red flags going off because we haven't talked about kinetic energy yet, so what does that even mean? Well, we're not going to talk about energy now. Instead, we're going to focus on how we can identify this type of collision and other types of collision using momentum rather than using energy. This is the formal definition, and we will revisit it when we get to the unit on energy. But today, I want you just to focus on knowing what it is and how we can effectively identify it. And how you can do that without using energy, without having to calculate energy, and this is actually a faster method, is that the magnitudes of the relative velocities of the objects before and after the collision are equal. All right, so let's break this down. So if I look at the before situation here with these two blocks, the pinkish one and the greenish one, the green one's not moving, the pink one's moving at some velocity v. So what is the relative velocity of these two objects? Well, if you look at the pink one, it would say that the green one is moving towards it at v, because remember from its perspective, it's not moving. And the green block would say that the pink one is moving towards it at v. So the relative velocity between the two is just v. Now let's look afterward though. Afterward, the pink one hits, comes to a stop, and the green one continues at v. Well, when that occurs, the pink one would say the green one is moving at v away from it, and the green one would say that the pink one is moving at v away from it. So once again, the relative velocity between the two is simply v. And because the magnitudes of these relative velocities are the same, one is v and the other is v, positive or negative doesn't matter as long as the magnitude is the same, well then we know for a fact this must be an elastic collision. And therefore the total kinetic energy of the system is conserved, even if we don't fully understand what that is yet. All right, once again, let's go ahead and bring up for elastic that a really important point is that momentum is still conserved here as long as the system is closed. So this has both momentum conserved and kinetic energy conserved. Well, you could probably guess that if we have elastic collisions, we also probably have inelastic collisions. So an inelastic collision is a collision in which the total kinetic energy of the system is not conserved. Some of that kinetic energy is in fact lost. So once again though, how can we identify this? Well, let's look at relative velocities once again, and we're going to say that the magnitude of the relative velocities of the objects before and after the collision are in fact now not equal. So let's look at this example. If I go, the before situation is exactly the same. I've got the pink going towards the green block at V, which means that both of them see the other one as moving at V. That would be the relative velocity between the two blocks. But afterward, you'll notice, and I know I wrote V here, but look at the size of the arrows. The green one is moving, but not as fast as the pink one was originally, and the pink one's actually still moving forward a little bit. And so if I was to look at the 
relative velocity between the two, well, the green would say that the pink one is moving away from it because it's moving faster, but not at the speed v that the difference was originally. And the pink one would say that the green one is moving away from it as well, but also not at that initial entire speed v. So we have lost, for lack of a better term, some of that relative velocity. We've lost, therefore, some of that total kinetic energy of the system, and this is, in fact, an inelastic collision. But what about momentum? Well, law of conservation of momentum still applies as long as this system is closed, the momentum will still be conserved. So we're just assuming these surfaces are frictionless or something like that. Now, I've definitely had students before say, well, where is this energy going? Well, um, we can get in more detail on that when we get to collisions, but more than likely, these two things have hit each other and the molecules have vibrated some, so that is some of it. There's going through that vibration, it's gone to sound waves, things of that nature. The last type of collision we're going to look at is actually the easiest one to identify, which is known as a perfectly inelastic collision. Note, we don't have any perfectly elastic, we just have perfectly inelastic. And this is a collision during which the objects that are not initially stuck together are now stuck together when they hit each other. So just looking up here at the top, same before situation, but now when the pink block hits the green block, something happens where they somehow interlock, and they're now moving in tandem at a lower speed. And when this occurs, a lot of kinetic energy is lost from this system. Now, what does a lot mean? Really, there's not a perfect definition for that. Um, it would be more than just simply an inelastic collision. When we look at, you know, when we distinguish between elastic and inelastic, you can just look at the fact if the energy is conserved or not, or look if the relative velocities are equal or not. But when it comes to inelastic and perfectly inelastic, it's more important just to focus on did they stick together or not. Pretty straightforward. So just thinking about the fact you have two objects, and now we just have, you know, a system that we can treat as a single object. Could be more than that, could be more than two originally, but we're just going to focus on that now. And once again, momentum is still conserved as long as the system is closed. So for all of these, the momentum was still conserved. It still applies, period, as long as the system was closed the entire time. So being able to identify a collision as elastic or inelastic is ultimately our goal here for just right now. So let's look at a couple of examples and see if we can do that. Well, looking here, we've got two blocks, a purple one and a yellow one. They're both moving to the right initially. The purple is moving faster. They hit each other afterward. The yellow one continues moving to the right a little faster than it was initially. And the purple one's now moving to the left at a lower rate. And the question is, is this an inelastic or elastic collision? It's obviously not perfectly inelastic because they'd be stuck together or an explosion because they would have started as one object and then moving apart. So we really only have two options here. Well, how can we figure out the relative velocity before and after? Now remember, if you want to figure out the relative velocity of these two, ultimately you just have to combine them in certain ways, either adding them or subtracting them. So if I look at the first situation, well, they're moving in the same direction, um, but they're going to be getting closer to each other. So we're actually going to subtract them to find the relative velocities. So if this one's moving to 10, this one's moving to 2, we subtract 10 and 2, and we get 8 meters per second. In other words, from the purple block's perspective, it's not moving, and the yellow one is going towards it at 8 meters per second. And from the yellow box perspective, the purple block is going towards it at 8 meters per second. Well, after the fact, they're moving away from each other, so they both are going to move faster. They're both, from their perspectives, going to be moving faster than they are from this perspective. And so we can add these velocities together, and we're factoring to get 5 meters per second. And so, once again, we look at these relative velocities. They are obviously not the same. So this is an inelastic collision. Now, something to keep in mind here is that you might have gone here to the top and gone, well, this is going to 2, that's a 10, so couldn't it be negative 8? Sure. But the thing is, though, to keep in mind is that it's the relative magnitude of the velocity. So we don't care about the minus sign or the plus sign. It's just that the relative difference here is bigger than the relative difference there. All right, let's look at one more example. I've got a blue block and a red block. They're both moving to the right. Afterward, they're both moving to the right after they've collided, but the red block's moving faster. The blue block is moving slower. Well, initially, well, what is the relative velocity between the two? The blue is 5.5. The red is 2.5. They're going to be approaching each other. And so if we look, the relative velocity should be 
3 meters per second, that the red one is going to be seeing the blue one is coming towards it as 3, the blue one is going to see the red one is going towards it at 3. And afterward, if we look at the relative velocity, we once again are going to subtract them because they're moving in the same direction. And so if they're moving in the same direction, 4.9 minus 1.9, that is a difference of 3 meters per second. The blue one is going to see the red one is moving away at 3, the red one is going to see the blue one is moving away at 3. But that magnitude, even though one is towards and one is away, is still 3 in both situations. So this is an elastic collision. So that's actually all we need to do for this video on types of collisions. Our main takeaways, can you describe, can't spell, can you describe how explosions, elastic collisions, inelastic collisions, and perfectly elastic, inelastic collisions are similar and different? Keeping in mind that they, you know, possibly uh, conserve or don't conserve uh, kinetic energy, the relative magnitudes may or may not be the same, they may or may not lock together, but in every situation, as long as the system is closed, the total momentum is conserved, period. Don't mix that up. Be careful of that. And additionally, can we identify a collision as being elastic, inelastic, or perfectly inelastic by going through the process we just did with the last couple of examples?